Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Mark Todorovic and in this video we're going to talk about some really important medical terms associated with anatomy and physiology. Now when you just start out learning anatomy and physiology, you'll find that you're learning a whole new language. It's going to have aspects of Latin and Greek, things that you've probably never heard before, but you have to learn. So this is one of the difficulties associated with learning anatomy and physiology. So we're going to go through four important points today that everybody should know when they learn AMP. So first thing is the anatomical position. Super easy, doesn't take very long to learn. Regional terms of the body, so being able to name or label various aspects of the human anatomy. Directional terms, how to describe where an anatomical position is or location, and various planes and sections of the body. So let's first start with the anatomical position. This is super simple. The anatomical position is the way that the body is positioned every time you think about explaining anatomy. So for example, the anatomical position is feet shoulder width apart, eyes facing forward, hands by your side with your palms facing forward. This is the anatomical position. And anytime you describe something regarding anatomy, this is the position you need to have in mind. That's the anatomical position. Let's talk about regional terms. So we know that the body can just very broadly be broken up into the axial and appendicular components. So axial is going to be head, neck, trunk, right? Head, neck, trunk. Appendicular is everything coming off. So this is going to be the limbs basically. But all of these areas have their own regions associated with it. And then the regions themselves have their own subanatomical areas. All right, so let's just first talk about the regions of anatomy. So first thing is let's start with the head. Now we don't call it the head in anatomy. The term that we use is the cephalic region. Cephalic. Now you can think cephalo is Latin for head. So cephalic, cephalo, think of a cephalopod. What's a cephalopod? A cephalopod is an octopus. Cephalo, head, pod, meaning feet. What's an octopus? It's pretty much just head and feet, right? So cephalo being head. What else do we have? We've got the neck. Now the neck, the term that we use is cervical. And some people may say cervical. Now you're probably sitting there going, wait a sec, cervical, cervix, isn't the cervix got to do with the female anatomy, female reproductive anatomy? Well, the cervix is simply the neck of the uterus. So cervical just means neck. Then what we've got is we are going to have the thoracic area. Now the thoracic region is from the neck to the diaphragm. Right? The, the diaphragm is the anatomical barrier between the thoracic area and the abdominal area. So this is thoracic, which makes underneath it abdominal. Abdominal. Now for abdominal, Thoracic, first of all, like I said, from neck to diaphragm, you're going to have things like your heart and your lungs and some of the great vessels of your heart in the thoracic area. For abdominal, this is where most of your gastrointestinal tract resides. Then we're going to have pelvic. So pelvic is going to include the genitourinary tract or most of the genitourinary tract. So this has got to do with the uh, reproductive system and also the urinary system. So the genitourinary tract. And then what we also have is now the limbs. Now we know that we've got upper extremities, for example. And obviously there's going to be a limb on this side. And lower extremities. Upper extremities, lower extremities. And Hands and feet, obviously. Now, when we look at hands and feet, hands, the word we use is manus for hands, and for foot, it's pes for foot. Now, like I was saying before, there's going to be various anatomical structures associated within these regions, but these are the major regions. Cephalic, cervical or cervical, thoracic, abdominal, pelvic, which we didn't label, pelvic. 
lower extremities, upper extremities, manus and pes. But again, for example, the upper portion of the leg is the femoral portion, for example. Upper portion of the arm is brachial. Okay, so there's many different regions that you should be aware of. So these are the various regional terms. Let's now look at directional terms. So this is how you can describe various limbs or anatomy in regards to their direction. Where is something located in reference to something else? And so the way we can draw this up, first of all, is I want to draw up a body facing one way, like that. Put the nose there. And we're going to draw up a body facing forward. And again, in the anatomical position. All right. So, first of all, let's talk about some directional terms. First thing you need to know is facing forward. Forward, what's that going to be? What's the term we're going to be using here? Is anterior. Anterior. Facing forward, anterior. Facing backwards, posterior. Now in actual fact, what these terms are referring to is anterior towards the front, posterior towards the back. Okay, so anterior, if something is anterior to something else, it's to closer towards the front compared to something else. If something is more posterior to something, it's closer towards the back. Now think your bum being your posterior, that's how you can think of it, towards your bum, right? Towards the back. But here's another important point, is that there's another term that we use called ventral and dorsal. Now here's the thing, ventral means towards the belly, toward the belly. And dorsal means toward the back. Now, you're probably thinking, how is that any different? All right, for us, it's not that different, all right? Because towards the front and towards the belly is the same thing. Same with posterior dorsal. But if you think about a four-legged creature, like a dog for example, there's the tail, there's the head, right? And there's a waggy tongue. All right, for a dog, anterior, so towards the front, is different to ventral towards the belly. In the same way that posterior, right, towards the bum, is different to dorsal, towards the back. So think of a fish, a dorsal fin is the fin that sits on the back. A ventral fin is the fin that sits on the front. For us, it's pretty much the same. Four-legged creatures, it's different. All right, so we've got anterior and ventral, posterior and dorsal. What's another one that we need to talk about? Superior and inferior. Superior is towards the head. Towards the head is superior. Now think about that, if somebody is your superior, they're higher up, higher up, superior. Inferior being below or away from the head. Away from the head or below or above. Inferior. So if somebody is inferior to you, which I hope you don't think that about anybody, they are below you. So superior, inferior. What else do we need to know? We need to talk about towards the midline of the body. So the midline of the body, if something is towards the midline of the body, it's called medial. Towards the midline is medial. And what if they're away from the midline? What if a structure is away from the midline of the body? It's called lateral. Medial, towards the midline, lateral, away 
from the midline. Now the last one I want to talk about here is when we're specifically referring to limbs or structures that have a beginning and an end for example. We're going to be for example talking about the limbs. You can see that limbs have a site of attachment. So for the lower extremities it's there. There's a site of attachment. So you can have closer to the site of attachment. We use the term proximal or further away from the site of attachment and we say distal. And you can do the same with arm for example. So the elbow compared to the wrist, what's that? Proximal. The elbow is closer to the site of attachment compared to the wrist. The wrist compared to the elbow, well that's elbow, that's distal. It's further away from the site of attachment. So there's the terms, anterior, posterior, ventral, dorsal, superior, inferior, medial, lateral, proximal, distal, and the last one we should probably be aware of is superficial and deep. If somebody's been superficial, it's all about the surface, and that's what superficial means, closer to the surface, and deep means away from the surface. So there we've done our directional terms. Last thing we need to talk about is our planes and our sections. So planes are invisible lines that we can draw within anatomy to separate out the anatomy into sections. What am I referring to here? Okay. Let's draw a couple out here. So first imaginary plane that we can do is if I were to draw an imaginary plane straight down the middle, straight down the middle, this plane is mid and it's called mid sagittal. And actually it's called mid sagittal because sagittus is referring to arrow. If you were to look at the skull, you'll see that there's a suture that goes straight down the middle and looks like an arrow and that's called the sagittal suture, straight down the middle, right? So if I were to imaginarily cut somebody down the middle and separate them into left and right sections, that's called mid sagittal plane. A mid sagittal plane. Now you can do a sagittal, so sagittal separates the body into left and right sections, all right? Mid sagittal equal left and right sections. But you can do something called a para sagittal, which means it's just off to the side a little bit. Para meaning next to. So you can do a para sagittal section, as you can see here, and it separates it off. Again, it's still into left and right sections, but they're not equal, unequal left and right sections. All right, now if I were to draw somebody facing laterally or to the side, for example, and then I was to do an imaginary plane down like that, separating into anterior, so front, and posterior back sections, we call this a coronal section, a coronal also known as a frontal plane. So it's a coronal or frontal plane and it separates the body into anterior, front, posterior sections. Last one I want to talk about is if we were to do an imaginary plane through like that, separating into superior above, post, uh, inferior below, sections. Now this plane could be there, it could be there, it could be there, it could be there. Doesn't matter, it's still separating out into superior and inferior sections. And this type of plane is called a transverse plane. Mid-sagittal, left and right, equal. Parasagittal, left and right, unequal. Coronal or frontal, front, posterior, back, uh, front, anterior, posterior, back, sections and transverse superior inferior sections. So there you go. This is a quick run through of going through really important anatomy and physiology based terms.